everybody hope you guys are healthy and safe so i'm in taipei right now i'm at airbnb that's why i lights a little bit yellow but i've been here for the past two and a half days now and the whole time i've been testing this guy the xiaomi pad 7 ultra now this tablet has nothing to do with taipei like it's not like i'm here for a launch event this is actually just a personal trip but i did bring this from hong kong to use here and this is also not selling in hong kong this tablet is actually only for the mainland china market so xiaomi's released you know a few tablets already this year and they're really good i made a review on the xiaomi pad 7 pro like right here if you want to look at it but this tablet stands out from the pack because it is the ultra it is the highest tier in xiaomi's tablet lineup and also because this guy is powered by xiaomi's own customized x ring 01 chip so this is xiaomi's self-designed chip now it's still built on tsmc second gen 3 nanometer architecture apparently shares a lot of the same parts for media tech dimensity 9400 but some of the parts are like kind of designed by xiaomi in-house the chip structure is a little bit different from whatever qualcomm media tech is using and on top of that just the fact that xiaomi's designing his own chip is huge because for the most part we have been used to xiaomi just sourcing chips from qualcomm or mediatek but this tablet uses its own chip so it's definitely like a item of interest because we want to see how this chip performs i have good news i've ran some benchmarks including geekbench 6 and the 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test on 3d mark and this x ring 01 chip performed very well neck and neck with the snapdragon 8 elite in fact on 3d mark the stress test it actually was a little bit more efficient than the snapdragon 8 elite at least the snapdragon 8 elite that's powering the oneplus pad 3 but on top of that i've also been using this guy for just daily use like writing articles going on social media running two apps at the same time and performance has been buttery smooth with no hiccups now what i'm gonna do is i'm also gonna edit this video on this tablet but after this i'm gonna move all the files here and i'm gonna edit this video that you're watching on this tablet and i'm gonna export it and then just see how smoothly everything runs before i do that though let's look at the rest of the hardware so you have a beautiful 14 inch oled display 120 hertz refresh rate and it has a nano texture coating on the top that helps reduce reflections so it's like a matte screen i mean it looks absolutely gorgeous like after seeing one of these matte anti-reflective screens i want it on all the other devices so 14 inch unfortunately there is a little bit of a notch here but that's because the bezels around the screen are so thin notch houses a 32 megapixel webcam all right so you're watching front facing camera with the xiaomi pad 7 ultra right now exposure is looking pretty good it's exposing my face and the outside window okay i know the audio on the last clip was not good that's because the coffee shop was pretty loud and i was also talking kind of soft because i didn't want to disturb people now i'm in a private setting talking about normal volume and this is how the webcam looks and sound around the back it's a very typical tablet build it's all metal aluminum body and then here's a 50 megapixel main camera that it's okay for a tablet i'm not going to test the cameras too much because i'm not going to go around the street taking street photography with a tablet that's ridiculous and then you have eight speakers four on each side and it pumps out excellent tremendous audio the screen also gets up to 1600 nits of max brightness so definitely bright enough even for outdoor use 1600 nits is a lot brighter than most laptop, laptop screens i mean look at this so for the most part i have it at like 50 60 percent most of the time now inside is a 12,000 milliamp hour battery which is very large it charges at 120 watt speed which is also super fast much faster than whatever uh, the ipad charges that now i have not used this guy continuously for like eight nine hours but i used it for two and a half hours just say at a coffee shop not video editing no mostly just word processing and it only drained about like 15 16 percent battery and i also just ran a 20 minute uh, 3d life stress test which is a very intensive test and it drained about eight percent battery so battery life is very good like this guy can definitely last you all day if you just if you're just doing word processing or social media if you do video editing though then that may trim battery life in half but for the most part this is a tablet that you don't have to worry about battery life especially when you have a 120 watt charger that's included with the packaging so despite all of that the large battery and the excellent speakers 
This tablet is still very thin at 5.1 millimeters and it weighs 609 grams, which is about 1.3 pounds for Americans. But then of course, with a tablet this big, like I always say, you're not gonna use this as a handheld device. You're gonna pair it with a keyboard and Xiaomi makes an excellent but an original keyboard. So this is uh, Xiaomi's Focus Pro Focus keyboard. And yeah, I have to call Xiaomi off with this. It is like a carbon copy of Apple's Magic Keyboard. So it snaps on just like this five magnetic pogo pin. And after that, it elevates the tablet and props it up at various angles. The range of angles is not as large as like the OnePlus Pad 3, but this keyboard is much better to use when you're sitting down like on your lap. This keyboard is excellent. You have a relatively large trackpad and Xiaomi's mouse cursor is actually very accurate. It's almost as good as Apple's because I find the trackpad on Samsung tablets and OnePlus tablets to be a little bit slippery. Like the mouse cursor is always flying past where I'm trying to go. But Xiaomi, it's very accurate. It moves just like the iPad's cursor. And I've always said iPad's and trackpad is the best. Keyboard's also excellent. You can see the keys are spaced out evenly. Quite a lot of travel, but um, I don't think they're backlit. Like I didn't think backlit keyboard, it's, it's a big deal until I reviewed the OnePlus Pad 3 and a lot of people complain that the keyboard's not backlit. Like I don't really care because I am a touch typer. Like I, m once my fingers are in place, I can type at 100 words a minute. I don't need to look at the keyboard while I'm typing. So not being backlit, it's not a big deal for me, but apparently it is for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't think the keyboard's are backlit. I don't see an option to line it up, but otherwise you have a row of F keys up top that allows you to control um, the tablet, like, you know, like, control screen brightness and what else you have a shortcut button here that you can bring down stuff like the control toggle uh, bring up like a search and then if you can lock it with just like like the key so you can basically control the tablet without touching the tablet and you also have a fingerprint scanner right here on the left side too that doubles as a power button multitasking system is good but not as good as oneplus or oppos let me show you how so you open the app, you have three dots up here, you tap, you can quickly launch into a split screen. So that's pretty cool. And you can resize this window too, to have like this size be a little bit bigger, this is a little bit shorter, but then that's about it. Otherwise you cannot uh, go into that dynamic resizing of the windows the way OnePlus and Oppo tablets let you do, but you can also launch an app in a floating window. So that's good. So you can have an app in a floating window that's completely resizable while you have one app right here and you can throw this to the side if you like. So finally, let's get to that video editing test. So now I have to stop this video to move this portion of the video to this tablet. Okay, I've just moved the video files from this phone over to this USB stick and I'm just gonna put it into, plug it into the Xiaomi Pad 7 Ultra. Uh, the file apps pops up, I just tap explore. two videos are here. So these videos are, uh, there's two separate clips, four gig and 2.4 gig. So that's already 6.4 gigs worth of files there. Copy to internal storage, paste. Uh, so that's gotta wait for the files to move to the tablet. <clears throat> All right, it's finished loading now. Uh, while I was waiting, I stepped outside, ran around the corner, and got me a bun me, a Vietnamese sandwich. So to edit this video, I'm gonna use Luma Fusion. It's um, you need to pay for it. It's not a free app. CapCut also works, but I like Luma Fusion's timeline a little bit better. So let me start a new project, and if I go into Media Files here, yeah, my files are already here. So I drag this down there. This tablet also supports a stylus, obviously, but I don't have it with me, so I'm just gonna use my finger. So wow, I can scrub through the 4K timeline very smoothly. No lag at all, like the previous following it. So I'm not just gonna have a video of me talking nonstop, obviously. I'm gonna have B-rolls, which are footage that goes over the talking part. So I'm just gonna drag it onto the top layer. And you see, I have two layers of 4K footage now and it's still running very smoothly. Yeah, this tablet has nothing to do with time.
Okay, so I've assembled a rough cut of this video. It's about 10 minutes long right now. Obviously, it's not including this part that you're watching because this is still being filmed. But you see, I got multiple tracks, got captions on it, I made some like changes to the colors. And so far, I have not had any performance issues. Like everything has been, like the timeline's been scrubbing through smoothly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this video and I'm going to start a timer to check how fast this tablet can produce, export a 10 minute long multi-layer 4K video. And obviously this part that you're watching right now is not in the video. I will have to put that on there afterwards. So I'm going to have to do it exporting twice. Okay, so I've assembled a rough cut of this video. It's about 10 minutes long right now. Obviously, it's not including this part that you're watching because this is still being filmed. But you see, I got multiple tracks, got captions on it, uh, made some like changes to the colors. And so far, I have not had any performance issues. Like everything has been, like the timeline's been scrubbing through smoothly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this video and I'm going to start a timer to check how fast this tablet can produce, export a 10 minute long Multi-layer 4K video. Alright, I'm gonna set four, I'm gonna export to 4K 30 highest settings everywhere. Okay, now I have to hit this button one more time to begin the export. Okay, start the timer. So we'll see how long it takes to export a 10-minute video. I mean, we know on on a MacBook with an M4 chip, a 10-minute video will take like four or five minutes. We'll see how long it takes. The Xiaomi Silicon. Okay, the video is almost finished exporting and we have just passed the five minute mark. Not bad. Because like I said, even on my MacBook, it would take about three to four minutes to export this type of video. Finished. So it took five minutes and 27 seconds to export a 10 minute, 18 second long video. Now the video should be in my gallery. So, oh, here we go. So I'm in Taipei right now, my Airbnb, that's what. 4 gig and 2 point. Video turned out okay, let's check the specs. So this video size is 12 gig. Love that, so this tablet is able to export a 12 gig video in five and a half minutes and it's not hot. Okay, so now I need to still put this part of the video into LumaFusion, place it at the end of the video and then export again and after that, it will be the finished video. So I'm impressed. The Xiaomi Pass 7 Ultra actually managed to produce an entire 10 minute, 10 plus minute long video at reasonable speed uh, without heating up. And this is a brand new silicon, unproven. So it's awesome. So now, in addition to Qualcomm MediaTek, we have a third chip powering Android devices that's capable enough to be a flagship level device. So a few days ago, I called the OnePlus Pad 3 the best Android tablet. I guess now I have to say OnePlus has already lost the title because the Xiaomi Pad 7 Ultra is better. It has a better screen. This is an OLED panel, anti-reflective coating. It has a better keyboard. This is a, a better trackpad and better keyboard. And also the silicon in here is every bit as powerful, if not more, than the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite running in the OnePlus Pad 3. However, I still think the OnePlus Pad 3 is a better multitasking system. Now the price of this tablet is, in China, the price, it's after conversion from Chinese Yuan, it's about 700 US dollars to 1000 US dollars, depending on the configuration you buy. But that price probably won't, ap won't apply to you because you're probably not living in China. If you're watching this, that means you have to import and pay a markup. But if you're in China, you can get this for as low as 700 US dollars. That's awesome. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help me a lot. I mean, it is it is 1.30 a.m. right now on Sunday night, technically Monday morning. I'm putting this video together at 1.30 a.m. So if you appreciate the effort I put in, please subscribe to my channel. It would help me a lot. Thanks for watching.